One of the most common loops people get stuck in after a breakup looks like this. The person who initiated the breakup reaches out to their ex trying to see how they're doing to check in. The person who got broken up with is like overjoyed when they get this message, so they respond. And they talk for a while until that person who got broken up with brings up anything about getting back together or seeing why they're texting. At this point, the ex who texted pulls back and pretends like they weren't interested in anything at all. Then after a couple of weeks pass, they repeat the cycle all over again. These mixed signals, which are often called breadcrumbing, are the subject of today's video. So if you like videos like this to help you through your breakup, please consider clicking subscribe and I'll keep them coming. So what is breadcrumbing? How can you recognize it and why do exes do it? Breadcrumbing is the internet term for anytime your ex texts you to check how you're doing without wanting to progress anything further. If you're not sure whether your ex is reaching out with actual intention or if they're going through this breadcrumbing thing, you can better understand your situation by putting it on a graph like this. And I know you might be thinking, what the heck, dating is so complicated now we have to graph it? Maybe I'll just be alone forever, that's easier. Stick with me, it's gonna make sense. This represents time passing and this represents how much progression you guys are going through. If the line is going up, meaning that as time passes, they're getting more serious. Like at first they texted and now they're calling and then you're meeting up. That's awesome. That shows intention and that tells me that they're actually coming back for something serious. If on the other hand, your line looks more like this. They started with texting and then after two weeks they text again and then after two weeks they text again and there's no progression at all. Then there's a good chance you're experiencing breadcrumbing. Before we take a deep dive on breadcrumbing, I want to make it really clear on what is not breadcrumbing. We'll talk about setting a boundary, how you can get out of this loop, but I don't want you guys setting it if your ex is actually coming back in the correct and normal way. A lot of people are going to tell you unless your ex texts you directly about getting back together, then they don't want to do it. And that is a safe route, but that's not the way people usually text in the beginning. In the beginning, people really do text very indirectly because they're afraid of your rejection. That might sound weird, like why would my ex be afraid that I would reject them when they broke up with me? And I made a whole video about that that you can watch after this one, I'll link it at the end. But because of that, they usually don't text you very directly right away. The key to know if it's actually breadcrumbing is like we talked about a second ago. If it's been two weeks or a couple months and they're still texting you indirectly and every time you bring up anything, they push you away, that's breadcrumbing. If on the other hand, you've been in no contact for a while and then they finally text you and it's their first time texting you and it's indirect, that's not breadcrumbing. That's an actual reach out and I would pursue that and see where it goes. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, let's dive deeper into breadcrumbing. But why do exes do this? Like, doesn't it just make their life complicated too? It totally does. But people don't always make decisions based on what would make their life the best. You can think of it like this. If you've ever taken a physics class, you know that things like to be at their lowest state of energy. And what that means is if you think about this pen, it would rather be on the ground down here than magically floating up here in the air. It just won't do it. Because floating in the air like that is a high state of energy. Things don't like to do that. And people are exactly the same. So if you've got three different possibilities that your ex can be in, being with you again, semi-talking stage, and never seeing you again, being with you again is going to be a high state of energy. There was some reason you guys broke up and it's going to take a lot of work to overcome that. So that's difficult. If your ex still has feelings for you, never seeing you again is pretty difficult too. They're gonna have to get through life without you and really miss you and that's hard. So a lot of people to avoid these two difficult situations choose this middle zone where every two weeks they text you but you guys never progress to become anything. That's the lowest state of energy and it's really sad too because neither of you are ever gonna be happy that way. From the ex's point of view, it feels like this. They go through life and they're doing fine but as the weeks pass, they begin to miss you and to soothe that anxiety of missing you, they text you to see how you're doing. As soon as they text you and you respond in a kind and polite way, that anxiety that they were feeling building up within themselves all dissipates. And then the process starts over. They go through their life, weeks pass again, the anxiety builds and builds and builds as they wonder how you're doing. And then they text you again, soothe, dissipate. It's kind of like a pressure valve. You can imagine pressure inside of a canister that builds and builds and builds and builds until after a little bit, you need to let a little bit of it out. Turn the release valve. Then there's room for the pressure to build again and then it repeats and repeats and repeats and hurts you again and again and again. So how can you stop this so you're not stuck in this loop forever? And I know a big part of you wants to be with them still. If it didn't, you'd just block them. And if that's you, if you don't care anymore, just block them. That's the way out of the loop. But if you do and you're scared so you keep replying, how do you overcome that fear? This quote really helped me through that process. I don't remember where I heard it or who said it, but it pretty much goes like this. People change when changing becomes less painful than staying the same. Meaning that until this middle option becomes a higher source of energy than either of these two that we went over earlier, your ex is gonna keep picking the middle one. 
until it hurts more to keep texting you every two weeks, they're going to keep doing it. If you want out of this loop, set this boundary next time they breadcrumb you. This is gonna be your model, but remember to turn this into your own words. I love hearing from you, but it's making it hard for me to move on. I think we have something special together that can be worked for, but I respect your decision to break up with me. As long as that is your decision though, please don't text me. If you change your mind, let me know. A boundary like this deletes that middle option. So now they have to either get back together with you or never see you again and move on. If they've been breadcrumbing you, that means they do have some of these feelings. That's why the pressure's building up. So you can have confidence that you're acting from a position of strength and that you have something valuable. You are valuable. Now you might be thinking, what if this boundary scares them away? What am I gonna do? I'll probably never hear from them again now. Maybe. But if that's the case, they weren't gonna get back together with you anyway. If you can come up with the courage to set that boundary, this is probably what's gonna happen next. They're going to test it. And how you respond to that is actually more important than setting the boundary in the first place. They're probably going to wait a couple weeks just like they did last time and then text you asking you how you're doing. I would answer them, say you're doing well, but then ask them if they've considered your boundary. Ask them if they're reaching out to you to actually work on their relationship. Most likely they're not ready. If they were just testing, they probably want to see, is that middle option still available because I really want to be there? So you'll probably get some sort of answer like, oh, I don't know still, I'm still having a hard time. And that's okay. If they do that, just reiterate the boundary. Say, okay, well then please don't text me unless you're ready. If you set the boundary, but then you're weak when they test it, you're setting yourself up to be in this loop forever because then they'll know even if you say something, your words don't have that much value. So please don't set this boundary until you're actually ready to stick to it. But a lot of the time, if you do set that boundary and then reiterate it, that pressure builds and builds and builds until a lot of times it drives the change that you need your ex to make for the relationship to actually work. Now, I know what I'm asking you to do here is not an easy thing, but if you can zoom out and look at your entire life, it's a lot easier than staying in this loop for years. I've mentioned in the last video that I do coaching calls and I do, I've done about a thousand of them. I do about three to five every day. And I can't tell you how many people I've seen that have been in these breadcrumbing situations for years. The longest one I've seen was 20 years where they would go and check in every couple of months and never get anywhere because she was so afraid of letting go, setting a boundary and valuing herself. You don't want that to be your life story. So be strong enough here to bet on yourself and take care of yourself. This really is your best chance of getting your ex back, but also just being happy. If you're still having a hard time thinking about setting this boundary, that's okay. Wait until you're ready. But it is worth realizing that continuing to wait and continuing to go through this loop doesn't actually give you any more control. Your ex is gonna date someone when they're gonna date someone. Continuing to talk to you every once in a while and then push you away is not going to keep them there. The only thing it is guaranteed to do is continue making you sad. Time is going to continue to pass, so you might as well have that time be used towards moving on or getting back together. Because eventually you're gonna be five years down the road. It's up to you right now to make the choice about where you want to end up. You can do it. Comment below for what videos you guys wanna see next. And if you want more help for your breakup, click subscribe and thank you so much for watching.